So there is no better time to start practicing installing your new inverter than during a lightning storm. Just have oh, there, there you go. I hope I don't it's all what we do. Dun, 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 dun. You said it's always a good thing to have extra lights on board in case the power goes out. <laughs> Don't forget the different bartenders on the way out. I'll be here all night. Oh, thank you, thank you. This was a pretty big project and everything was delivered to our house. So the first thing that I had to do was to unwrap everything from the pallet that it was delivered on. And since it took a while, I'm definitely going to speed this up for you, but I wanted to make sure that I carefully unpacked all the different batteries that came with the system. And I laid them out in the garage to get an idea of how much space I would need when installing these on the boat. And I also wanted to figure out what orientation was going to be best for them so that I only had to install them once and not play around with it too much. And like I said, I was gonna read the directions, which I made sure I did. And what I wanted to do was also look at all the components for the inverter to figure out what type of wrenches and needle nose pliers that I would need. I knew I'd be working in a tight space and I didn't want to have to keep coming in and out of the hall to guess and get different tools. So I practiced this many times over in the garage. And finally, I wanted to make sure that the terminals and the cables that I had were nice and clean. I decided I'd use some baking soda and water and an old toothbrush to clean them up. And then safety came to mind and I realized I should probably do that with some sunglasses. So took a little bit, made sure that everything was nice and clean so that the batteries could have a good connection and there would not be too much resistance on them when the inverter system was running. And then next, what we needed to do was head to the lake and make sure that we headed out to the island to find a good spot for this project and get everything started. The first major step in this process was getting the two new batteries for the inverter system installed in the lower bilge area by the front deck. It was a lot tighter down there than I thought it would be, so I'm really glad that I had practiced and got all the required tools that I would need I wasn't able to film much, but I can show you right now what the final setup looks like. This was right before I made all the final connections and secured everything in place and installed this smart shunt, which I'll talk about later. Installing the batteries turned out to be a pretty big project because the space was very tight. So we took the rest of the day off and even the weekend and relaxed and we came back to the marina where I finished installing the inverter. Shore power is off on both. Power is not connected to the boat. Bring in the snacks. Power off, power off. Nothing available, nothing available, nothing available, and nothing available. Let's get started. This is the old inverter. I've labeled the AC power in, AC power out, and what needs to be hooked up. One thing I'm gonna focus on is making sure that I leave enough room for the positive terminal here off that fuse to connect into the new inverter. And I'm gonna to have to cut the length of these ground wires to match the neutral and the hot in. That's probably my biggest concern or project on doing this. And then also making sure I don't have anything uh, miswired, but we're gonna go step by step real slow and see how this works. As I mentioned earlier, I had labeled the AC in and the AC outline so I knew which one to connect to the new terminals. This process was a lot more straightforward than I thought it would be, and I'm glad that I had gone down there previously to figure out what tools I would need, because as you can see, it's a pretty tight space I was working in. 
but the process went really quickly. It was actually surprisingly uneventful. And so I've sped everything up here to save everyone's time. I have the last bit of my tools, half inch bolt lock socket wrench that got my RJ cord. I'm gonna attach a smart dongle to there. That's gonna be my work area for the next few minutes. So see how this goes. If you can't tell already, this is actually a pretty tight space that I was working in. And I was really glad that I had practiced everything in the garage. It wasn't too complex, but after watching a few YouTube videos, I figured out that needle nose pliers were gonna be the lifesaver. So, first part's done. Our line out, connected here, ground, neutral, hot. I'm about to do the line in. Because this positive terminal is a little bit shorter, just to redo the orientation a bit. But it's not a big deal. Uh, still be able to make sure that the ground, positive, negative, fit in here. Just need to connect those. We should be good. It's a little toasty, so I'm going to go cool off for a second. Not only did I practice installing this inverter in the garage to make sure I had all the right tools, but I ate about three bananas before I even started this and chugged a couple Gatorades to make sure that I was well hydrated and didn't get any cramps. Because if you can't tell again, this is clearly one of the most uncomfortable positions to ever work in. The whole process only took about 10 minutes. It really felt like it took six hours because it was so hot, but I was really glad when it was done. Well, if you can see, we are not connected to shore power. But we have a fan on and lights inside. We have a working refrigerator. Turn our shore power back on. That smart dongle, that smart dongle right there blinking, you need to tape it on there. I just want to make sure everything fits first gives me Bluetooth connectivity to the inverter and it tells me everything that's happening. So right now it's bulk charge, topping off the batteries and I can see all that from my phone and I'll do some screenshots, another great feature about this inverter. And it also came pre-programmed from Battleborn, which saved a heck of a lot of time on my end for sure. This smart shop right here is really cool because it's Bluetooth and it's a low resistance way of reading how much power is being drawn from the batteries given the current load and it hooks up to our phone. I'll show you some screenshots, but it gives you estimated hours left, current charge, really cool information. I'm also going to link another great video on YouTube about installation and review of this really cool feature uh, to add to the system. The support we received from Battleborn batteries was really great and made the process go incredibly smooth. Check out why we partnered with Batterborn and switched to lithium ion and some of our epic boat camping videos right here.